Okay, today we're going to go over the custom widget. And this widget allows you to develop any custom functionality that you'd like to embed into the phone. So let's get started. We first start off with add a widget. Let's go here and see the selection of widgets that we have. The very bottom, <clears throat> you could see a custom widget here. Go ahead and click add. And let's give this our custom widget test. Give it a quick name. Let's give it a quick icon. Something not too fancy. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> we see here that the widget comes with an example right out of the box. And this example here uh, is extremely simple, but is meant to illustrate uh, the functionality of this. So as you can see here, this is just comments. You can completely delete this out and it'll be absolutely fine. And this is the HTML portion of the widget. As you can see here, hello world is just simple text put into HTML and then a div tag with the ID JS text. On the right hand side, we can see the emulator that has our title, which is based on that. Hello world, which we understand is the text that we put in here. But now we have this div with some text in, in it. Looks good, however, there's no, tell now, we don't know how that came about. We'll explain that in a second. Let's move over to the CSS tab. Now, comes empty, but we could do something as simple as um, if we take everything in the body tag and say color is red. Everything is now red. Let's say font size uh, is x large. Now everything is larger. Uh, so simple CSS that you would do on a regular HTML page. We don't have to deal with the header and then the body of, of the HTML. Reason being is there's a lot of behind the scenes um, injections that occur to uh, make it work within the app. Uh, so all we need to do is just deal with our uh, custom functionality that we're looking for. So again, very simple, just text, a div that somehow gets injected with text, CSS that affects uh, the styling of this widget. And now we'll move on to the JavaScript portion. On the JavaScript portion, this comes in with a pre-made example. It may look a little bit complicated at first, but it's actually pretty simple. Uh, we use the require.js functionality. Uh, so as, as you can see here, if you go to http require.js.org, you can read up about that. This allows us to import certain functionality that you wouldn't have to develop on your own. Uh, or import on your own. For example, jQuery is a known library that uh, many web developers use. We provide it for you. There's no need to link to it um, using the internet. Uh, so once it's on the phone, it's actually on the phone. The other piece uh, are services like Bluetooth you can import in. Uh, but again, this is all just comments that we can delete out. Now it says define, we're defining our module here. Now again, this isn't anything we developed. This is part of the require.js format. And I can show you that even this is optional, but it's highly recommended to continue to use that. We say we want to import over jQuery. So it's just simple text saying jQuery. And then when jQuery comes in, I want to refer to it from then on as a dollar sign. You can put uh, JQ, you can put anything you'd like, and it would, it would use that. Um, so for now, we're just going to keep it the dollar sign uh, because that's the naming convention usually people that use jQuery are used to. Uh, we're creating a new variable that is an object that has a method called initialize. Now this is important because the page, once it's done rendering, it's going to call whatever this module returns back and it's going to call the initialize function here. Uh, so you could even keep this empty, but it's good to, to have something in here. Now, if you notice while, while I'm talking, I am trimming down all the notes. I'm trimming down anything that's not absolutely necessary here. And you see that it's actually a lot less code than uh, we saw initially. Uh, so the, the code that was there is really meant as helper. So if we just trim it down, you could see on line four here that all we do is use jQuery, which is what we received from this. We call any tag with this ID Give me the first one and insert into its text this text. So if we look at JS text, where is JS text? We go back, ID, JS text. If we change this to JS text 2, 
it no longer works. Back to JS text, and it works. We come here and we say, okay, uh, insert into it hello from JavaScript. Hello from JavaScript. So technically, if I come in here and change the string to hello test one, it changes to hello test one. So it's extremely simple from that from that point of view. You can come in here and set timeout. Let's give it a quick function here. And we say, let's go ahead and hide the JS text after five seconds. And you'll notice that after initialize, after five seconds, it disappeared. Let's give that another shot. So it shows one, two, three, four, five disappears. Let's do something that's a little bit more advanced. So let's go to HTML. And uh, what I want to do here is actually, I'm going to pull example from online. You'll notice here uh, that this, sir, this website uh, is a service that allows you to inject dummy data uh, through a REST API. Now that may sound a little bit uh, too technical, but basically what it is, is it houses a lot of dummy data and it says anybody who needs to fill in a list of random names, or random emails, telephone numbers, you can call me to get an example list and every time you do it, it should change. Uh, it gives you some documentation on how to work with this. It also gives you the jQuery example and I'm going to use this in our example. It gives you the JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and the result we're looking for is something similar to this. So if you go to filltext.com, you'll see this, and this is the example that I'm going to use. So let's go back to our example here. So I'm going to remove all the HTML here. I'm going to remove the CSS, and I'm going to remove everything in the initialize. So this is extremely bare bone right now. So if I go to HTML, and let's do something very simple. Let's actually create a table uh, with ID equals records, and just, just a simple table. Really, not, nothing more is needed. Uh, let's go to the CSS, and let's say um, table has order... 1px um, solid grid, for example. And you see this little dot shows up. It's because the table is actually very, very small. There's nothing in it. Uh, so that's just a border circling itself. So you see a pixel show up there. Let's click on JavaScript. Now let's actually put in some code here. Now I'm not going to bore you by typing it all in. I have it pre-typed out. And I'm going to just copy it here and explain what it does. Okay. So... What this does here is it says create a variable called URL from HTTP filtext.com with a callback. And you can see all that documentation from filtext.com. Uh, right here, we are using jQuery to say get JSON from this URL. And here are the parameters I want you to pass. So give me five rows with first name, last name, and tell. I could say give me 10 rows. And you see, we see 10, uh, give me one row. And you see one. So let's put it back at five. And we see five names show up. First name, last name, and tell. Once it's done, grab the data that it returned. And for each item in this data, loop through it and add a new table row with first name, last name, and telephone number. If I were to grab this line and put it above. So I put last name in front of first name. <clears throat> you can see now it's last name, then first name. Let me go ahead and switch that back. You say first name and last name. Uh, so at this point here, uh, we could actually go in and add a little bit of functionality and say, I want to add in, let's see, a button for delete 
And you can see now we have buttons for delete. And in the CSS, I can come here and say, but now this is really poor CSS, which basically allows you to change every table and every button. When you write your CSS, you probably want to be more specific uh, on what you want to change. But in this simple example, we'll just do button. We'll say um, background color red. And uh, we'll say color is white. just to have it stand out a little bit. So you can, you can see how you can add in functionality, add in styling on the fly, and you'll see it reflect on the phone. Uh, we could say here, uh, width is 100%. And now you see the table take 100%. We could say things like the table row. Um, this doesn't really apply to mobile, but uh, let's say, background uh, color is yellow so this is again doesn't apply to mobile but you can see here on hover background is yellow gives you some functionality and you can see you can pull any information this information could be a list of employees could be a list of products could be a, a stock quote that could be any data that's that's pulled in from any source that allows cross-browser communication um, in this case, uh, you can pull it from uh, a, a text filler or you can pull it from your own business logic. If you have a servers or a business or a platform that you're using and pull information from, you can do that. Um, you don't necessarily have to pull information from the internet. You can uh, write your own widget here that does a calculation um, for uh, mortgage rates. You can do a calculation of bank interest. You can do uh, anything that you can do on a standard web page with obvious uh, limitations being on mobile. But this will give you a quick example of how you can pull information from a remote website and populate it into your app. I hope this helps.